Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I know, I'm super late to the party, but in this video, we're going to talk about what's new and significant in the latest version of Capture One, that is Capture One 20 Pro. As I mentioned at the top, I'm super late to the party. This uh, release of Capture One has been out for a few months, but to tell you the truth, I just purchased it. So I thought I'd do a video and talk about some of the things that are different in this version. And I'm gonna say right at the top, there's nothing earth shattering here, just some incremental improvements in my opinion. Now, as far as the naming, uh, the previous version was Capture One 112 Pro, and all of a sudden we're at Capture One 20 Pro. And that is just because, I guess, they're aligning the version number to the year. So going forward, you'll probably see in the year 2022, when they come out with a new version, it's going to be Capture 122 Pro and so on. Now, as far as the workspace, it's pretty much the same. They changed some of the icons here and there slightly. Uh, probably the more significant change is on the left-hand panel, when you're in some of the tabs, if you have a lot of tools there, in the past, you couldn't really scroll. So if you had to get to a tool at the bottom, you had to collapse down one of the tools above to get a tool towards the bottom. Now you could scroll down to it. Also, uh, for example, in this tab, you could see that by default, the histogram and layers are pinned at the top. You could pin any tab so it won't scroll. Just click on the three dots in the right-hand corner of the tab and then move tool to pinned area. Now, in this case, exposure is pinned and the ones below it will scroll. And if you want to remove um, a tool from the pinned area, you could just drag it out of there or click on those three dots and then click on move tool to scrollable area. So little slight change in the workspace, but a welcome change as well. Now, another change as far as when you're culling your images in the past, um, if you gave it a star rating or a color label, you had to then physically go over and click on the next image in your film strip and then do the same thing and then click on the next one. Now it will auto advance. But by default, that is turned off. So you're going to have to turn that on. To turn it on, go to select and then go down to select next when and put check marks next to star rated if you want it to advance when you add a star rating and put a check mark next to color tag if you want it to advance when you give it a color tag. So now with those having check marks next to them, let's say I want to give this image a three star rating. When I hit the three on my keyboard, the, uh, the uh, Capture One will automatically advance to the next image. Let's say I want to give this one a red color label. I hit the minus key on my keyboard and it gives that a red color label. So you now have auto advance. Now. The next thing I guess is the, to me, I guess the most significant change uh, is with the high dynamic range tool. As you look at it now, those of you familiar with earlier versions of Capture One, you'll notice that there's four sliders instead of two. In the past, there was just highlight and shadow. And those were recovery sliders, meaning you couldn't go negative on them. They were at zero and you only could move them to the right. And if you moved, let's say highlights to the right, it actually would bring the brightness level of your highlights down so that you were recovering detail in the highlights. Similarly for shadows, you only could move that to the right and you'd be opening up the shadows, making the shadows brighter so you're recovering some detail in the shadows. Well, with this version of Capture One, there in you could go negative or positive. So its operations is more like Lightroom. So with highlights, with it in the middle, you could bring highlights down by moving it to the left or open up the highlights by bringing it to the right. And you can see on this image, there's not much of an effect there. Similarly for shadows, it starts out in the middle at zero and you could bring a highlight or shadows down by moving it to the left or open them up by moving it to the right. Now they've added the white and black sliders. Those weren't there in previous uh, versions. And that's welcome as well if you, uh, sometimes when you do a highlight and shadow adjustment, you're flattening out the image a little bit and you could regain some of that contrast uh, with the whites and the black sliders. 
and those work similarly to the highlights and shadow sliders in that if you move either of them down, you're making either white or black darker. And if you move them up, you're making the white and or black lighter. So um, I guess a welcome addition or change in this version of Capture One. Now, another thing I, I like, and I think it's a kind of a significant change, is with the uh, color editor. They now have what I call target adjustment tool because that's what they call it in Lightroom. And that's what I've called it for years. But uh, they call it, what do they call it? If I hover over it, direct color editor. So if you click on activate that tool, you'll see your tur cursor turns into the tool. And what this allows you to do is target a specific color in the image. And you could change the use saturation or lightness of that color. Now, for example, I'm hovering over the blue sky right now. If I want to change the saturation of the blue sky, all I need to do is go right over that blue sky and click with the left mouse button. Now, when I click with the left mouse button, the tool will disappear. But now when I drag or push my mouse up, you'll see that the saturation slider is moving up. And it's not just targeting blue. If you look, you'll see it's targeting two different colors. So it'll target whatever the color mix is of whatever color you're targeting in your image. And if I pull my mouse down, I'm moving saturation down. So you could see that. Now, if I want to affect the hue, all I need to do is move my mouse left or right. If I move my mouse left, I'm moving the hue slider to the left. If I move the mouse to the right, I'm moving the hue slider to the right. Now, if I want to affect the lightness of a specific color, Hold in the Alt or Option key. Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac and move your mouse left or right. And you can see that I'm now affecting the lightness level of the blue sky. So to me, that's a welcome change. I uh, like that tool. I use it uh, quite a bit. So I, I like that. Now they did a slight change to the crop tool. I'll hit the C key uh, to go into the crop tool. You can see I are, this image looks a little odd because uh, it, I adjusted keystoning on it because it, the images were, or the, I'm sorry, the buildings were falling backwards. So I fixed it. But the change with the crop tool is they've added handles in the middle. In the past, though, handles were only in the corners. But now they've added handles in the middle. So you could pull in from either side to affect the crop horizontally or from the top or bottom to affect the crop vertically. So that is... A slight change, I guess, uh, to the crop tool. Now, uh, they've also improved noise reduction. Now, I don't often shoot in super high ISO, and I really haven't had the chance myself to experiment with it. But from what I've been reading, it is a significant improvement. So noise reduction has been improved greatly. Now, that to me are the significant changes. And even then, they're not super significant. There are a lot more minor tweaks here and there that I'm not going to get into in this video, but I thought I'd make this video. So for those of you that have Capture One 12 Pro, you could make an informed decision of whether or not you want to upgrade to Capture One 20 Pro. Also, those of you that have been thinking about maybe just switching to Capture One, you're using another application, probably Lightroom, and you're thinking of moving to Capture One. This gives you an idea of what the interface looks like and how um, it generally works in general, very general. If you're interested in me doing more videos on Capture One, please leave a comment below and um, I'll definitely consider it. I'll also, in the description below, I'll have links to their website. You could check out Capture One uh, for yourself. They do have a free trial. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>